They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's gonna grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Seth. This is James, and you're watching Stars in the House, which is a live stream. We're literally live that we right. do. We've been doing since March, since theater, since everything closed. And it we is show 198. Yeah, we're going to have our 200th show, 200th show this week. In fact, hold on. Yes, yes. It was announced today. Our 200th show is going to be Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, Hank Azaria, we haven't even announced the other people that, that have that Bill Cobbs just said yes. You yeah. know, one of the, the three guys. We just rewatched the movie last night. Yeah, the old, so, yeah, with the Mickey mean Rooney guy. and Dick Van Dyke. Uh, um, who else? Um, um, oh, Sex, 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 we, uh, yeah, right. we only know their character names. Yeah, yeah, Attila yeah. the Hun. Yes. Anyway, that's going to be for it's our 200th so show. Fun. 200th show, day after tomorrow. So we've said that we're going to keep the show going until Broadway comes back, which we thought was going to be six weeks. <laughs> but it's been longer than we that. We were wrong. Well, we got to keep going because more and more people obviously are out of work. I just read, I think some theater in LA just finally laid everybody off. Wow. We're doing it for the Actors Fund. If you don't know the Actors Fund, it's a misnomer. It's not just for actors. It's that's for right. anybody at all in the business. So you could be an actor, singer, dancer, but anybody backstage, like stage manager, assistant stage manager, wig person, hair person, anybody in TV film, like whom? Well, uh, B. Marchill is about a theater production, so theater teachers. I said TV and films. I said, said teacher? I said, what about TV and film? And you were like, theater teacher. Well, theater teachers, you're just saying- TV all and people. film. I know, but I'm saying people in theater. Okay, by the way, Sirius uh, yeah, XM. Yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> This show is broadcast on Sirius XM, <laughs> yes. and our producer today was like, "People love you guys at the beginning, basically hating each other." Anyway, <laughs> Anna Gassar calls it Anna, Anna calls it simmering marital tension. Wait, wait a minute though, because mm -hmm. we're getting all these clips together for tom or tomorrow's show, and I think what it will be Saturday's show, because there are so many clips of our the last two hundred shows yeah. that one of them I saw you watching Anna Gassar, and I thought to myself. Are the marital tensions still simmering, or now have they boiled over? Yeah, because that, that was from like, April. Yeah, that was like April. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, yep. when it, when it, the only thing that was bothering Anna was her husband, like, cooking pinned, in the yeah, background. That's right. Like, She's like, can you not chop while I'm on a live stream? Anyway, the point is, listen, we're raising money. It's for, and if you need, if you're in the arts yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah, need yeah. to help paying, if you need help paying your rent, paying your medical bills, paying for your groceries, and someone, by the way, a person I've done a lot of Broadway shows, with it makes me sad, just texted me and said he needs help in the actress fund and he asked right. me how to do it. We've done, right. I mean, he's been on Broadway so many times and he doesn't have money right now. Exactly. So you can go to actressfund.org if you need money. However, if you're watching right now and you can you can help out, $5 is the minimum donation that the and website will take. maybe you want to be more chill, uh, cast member saying your name and the donation. Yeah, because you can go donate ahead. at starsinthehouse.com. And then once you donate, you're going to get, and also there's a text, 56512. You text fund 2020. Once you donate, you're going to get a receipt. Forward that receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com. And then we will send that to some of these Be More Chill people. And they will literally um, read it as either a cool person or a nerd, depending on their character track. So the point is, <laughs> just forward your donation. George Salazar donate. loves that. <laughs> so stupid. Donate. Will Roland is not amused. He was like, I was actually cool the whole show. All right. Well, whatever you say, I see you. Um, donations at starsinthehouse.com. And basically, Everybody watching, I know you're Beamer Chill fans. We don't need a million comments about where is fill in the blank. Did you notice I don't even have the comments yeah. up right Whoever now? Whoever is scheduled is going to be on. That's right. Yeah, because because look, there are so many people in tonight's show that George actually, I just told him before before we started, I said, I talked about our Sirius XM meeting, and it was as if George had overheard our producer saying, you need to segment the show into different play into yeah. different pieces. So George already brilliantly did that. Yeah, thank you, George. Um, so thank you, So George, we don't need a million comments about where is so-and-so, where is so-and-so, <laughs> bring back so-and-so. Okay. Cut, can, don't can everyone block tell Our therapist, whom we have not seen in a while, has a phrase, I'm sure that she did My not sister. make up, <laughs> saying, uh, you know, if it's hysterical, it's historical. Can you tell that maybe Seth has a little bit of historical from comments. Oh my and god! It's been it's been people who are not like regulars of the show, but they're maybe super fans of whatever shows we on that. Name certain shows yeah. that we've had because we don't want to offend anyone because we're happy everyone comes and watches. But some, let's say, some audience members are more patient than others. No, I'm reading the comments now. Actually, everyone's okay. very sweet. All right. Um, 
Um, but, but by the way, the cast cannot see the comments. Only James and I can see. Anywho, all right, David, cut. Hold on, hold on, hold on though. But we are up to because we got our new our new total from Maggie at the Actress Fund. We are up to raise. All right, so guys, yes. this is all for the Actress Fund. Yes. All this money, and it's just from people like you donating five, ten, fifteen dollars. No corporate donations. How much have we raised for the Actress Fund so far? Four hundred and fifty nine thousand one hundred and eighty dollars. Yay! Yes. Yes, Queens. Um, before we get to the cast, we want to highlight one of our favorite new organizations. And we purposely picked this show to do it because we knew there were a lot of young fans out there. Young people, this is how you can help save democracy. That's right. So without further ado, please welcome Ella from Poll Hero Project. Hi, Ella. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for having me. There are Hi. a lot of young people listening. Ella, have you started school yet? Yeah, I just started school two weeks ago. How's it? Are you doing it online or in person? Yeah, I'm doing it online, so it's very interesting. Have Have you been having internet problems like we have? Not yet. Fingers crossed. Okay, good. Um, Ella, um, can you tell everyone what Poll Hero Project is? Sure. So the Poll Hero Project is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization started by a small group of students at Princeton, Denver's East High School, and uh, UChicago. And our mission is to recruit thousands of student poll workers for this election. Um, to help, and we help facilitate the registration process. And in only a month and a half, we've already regi um, registered 15,000 poll workers, um, closing in on 16,000 today. So that's super exciting, um, huge growth. And we need these poll workers for the primaries. So that's that's kind of what or our organization's mission is all about. So Ella, so you don't, and I know it varies from state to state because let me just backtrack here. This is for anyone in the country, right? Like you'll help, you'll help walk someone through the process of becoming a poll worker, no matter where they yeah. live in the United States. Yeah, Absolutely. And it's a job, young people. It's a job. Just FYI, Absolutely. you can get paid. And the reason they need young people is because a lot of older people are scared of getting COVID-19. So we're trying to, the older people are not, Basically, they're just quitting. So there's this giant opening for young people. Absolutely. Um, over 60% of um, poll workers are historically, um, you know, senior citizens and they're at high risk for COVID-19. So we think it's young people's duty to step up and perform their civic duty by becoming poll workers. And um, like it was previously mentioned, it's paid. You can get paid anywhere from like 100 to $300 for one day's worth of work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But Ella, the the I, one of the cool things I think uh, about it is that you can, in some states, not even be eighteen. You can be sixteen or seventeen, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in a lot of states, that you can be sixteen or seventeen, and all you need is like parental consent, and then often you need signatures from an administrator at your school. Um, but that's that's it. Amazing. So I love that you guys started this. I love that we're hoping that tonight there's so many people watching. We hope you get a crazy giant uptick. That's right. And people going to pollhero.org and spread the word. And all you people with, you know, Instagram and Insta stories and TikToks, you really do need to tell young people about this because there's a major, major gap of poll workers and it's really going to screw up the election. Everyone should have the right to vote. And but we need poll workers there. So thank you, Ella. And thank you. Uh, we're going to have we're going to have someone back every day. I don't know who, who had to fight it out to come on Thursday with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson. You'll see Kai on Thursday, I believe. Okay. <laughs> All right. It was a big fight. All right. Thank you for tonight. Everybody, pollhero.org. Thank Thanks, you so Ella. much, Ella. Bye. Um, here we go. We're starting. George has mapped this out. George yes, is it's George in the house. He's decided <laughs> what the hell is on the show. So first, please welcome the composer and lyricist, Mr. as his um Twitter name is, Mr. Joe Iconis. Hey. Hi, Hi Joe. Joe. Sorry, my dog is friends. Friends. Hey, where are you? Not in New York City, right? Not in New York City. No, I'm in uh, Vermont. I'm in Weston, Vermont, which is home to the Weston Playhouse, uh, which is a great, a great regional theater. I'm not doing anything with the theater. Uh, just my wife and I, we were like, we want to get out of the city for a little bit. And we just felt a pull toward this small town in Vermont because we've done uh, summer theater here. <laughs> so it felt, it felt correct. How are how are people how are people there as far as masks and everything? We were just in Provincetown. It was like our first trip, basically, mm -hmm. in the six months, and there were signs everywhere. How is it in in Weston? Um, you know, people are they're great. It's you know, it's all like smart, like you know, sort of crunchy 
uh, you know, attractive older liberals here. So like everybody's got it down. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> you feel very safe, you know? Um, speaking of attractive older liberals, wow. Danielle says, Joe's hair looks fantastic. He looks like he's thriving in quarantine. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Is I that, haven't showered that... today. It's the natural oils. It's helping. <laughs> I thought it was a lace front. All right. So, Joe, um, I'm so fascinated. I would love these people to hear the story of how Be More Chill went from it'll never, ever be done again at Two River. And then suddenly, oh, by the way, I'm going to Broadway. So I just think it's such a hopeful story for people out there that listen to critics and listen to experts. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so the, the quick version is that I was commissioned to write this musical, Be More Chill, by this spectacular theater, Two River Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey. And um, uh, wrote the show uh, with my my great writing partner, Joe Trace. And it's based on this amazing novel by the late, great Ned Vizzini. And uh, we adapted this novel and we liked it a lot. We wanted to write this thing that felt like an old fashioned musical comedy. And uh, we premiered it at Two River in uh, June of 2015. And there was like a lot of like buzz kind of going into the opening. And I would had this experience a few times in my career where people around me kept being like, this is the one. This is the show that's going to transfer to New York City and you're going to go to Broadway and this is going to be your like breakout show. Um, and I, I had a few shows like that and they were never my breakout show. And so everyone was like, oh, this is, this is going to be more show. This is this is the one, this one. There's a lot of buzz here. And so we opened and uh, the New York Times came and they, they gave it a review that was uh, not very uh, pleasant for anyone uh, involved. And it just killed the buzz. It killed the show. You know, all these people who had tickets to see it, all these producers, theaters, they all uh, canceled their tickets. And and wow. it felt like the, sh the, the show was dead. And it felt like that because it was. It was the kind of thing where we, we, we ended our run at Two River uh, with zero prospects. There was nothing happening with the show. Nobody attached. Nobody wanted it. The, the miracle thing that happened was that... Uh, but Joe, wait a minute, wait a minute. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to bet, though, that the audience reaction was not what you what was in that review. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, much yeah. like, yeah, m like, like most things like that, uh, audiences loved it. <laughs> like, and that was sort of part right. of the excitement in the first place. The audience was going crazy for it. And the funniest thing about Be More Chill is that, you know, it sort of turned into the show that speaks so squarely to young people. But when we were first doing the show at Two River, I mean, the audience, it was a regional theater audience and, right. and Two River does a great job of getting in a younger crowd. But I mean, the, you know, our, our average audience member was in their 60s. How dare uh, and you? It, and it, yeah, no, but I mean, it, you know, it's, it, 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 it played, it played to a crowd that was not like, you know, teenagers. And so yeah. for me, it was like, oh man, like, you know, the, the sort of average theater goer uh, is digging this show. And if it ever had the opportunity to be seen by young people, I bet they would like it. Uh, right. But it truly seemed like that was not, not in the cards for us. Uh, but we recorded this cast album and we rec recorded this cast album because the guy uh, who's the, the head of the board at the theater, uh, uh, the Bob Recknitz was his name. He, uh, he just loved the show. He thought the show was great and he thought it deserved to be preserved. And uh -huh. so we went into a studio, we recorded it. Ghostlight, who's always supported me, released the thing. It was released in uh, October of 2015 and, uh, and nobody really cared. It was just kind of released and like, you know, the people who cared were the people who were gonna care about right. the cast album of a musical that played New Jersey for four weeks. Uh, and, and, you know, and Mr. and Mrs. Salazar, continue. And, yes, exactly, the Salazars always, and the Iconicists. <laughs> But, you know, so people liked it. It was like a culty hit and it yeah. sort of existed in that space that a lot of my stuff had existed in. And then mm -hmm. uh, literally the two years later, uh, I started noticing a lot of action online. I started noticing a lot of like social media excitement about the show truly out of nowhere. And it was the kind of mm -hmm. thing where like I'd be tagged in a, you know, uh, someone singing uh, Michael in the Bathroom, which is the song from the show and or someone, uh, you know, uh, doing like fan art. Uh, based on the characters, somebody doing, uh, you know, fan fiction based on things that happened in the show. And it sort of, it got, it got enough, 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 where I was like, what's what's happening with this? And so then I, um, you know, I called my my, my co-writer, Joe Trace, and I was like, are you doing something with Be More Chill? Because I'm getting all this, like, this action. And he's like, no, I was going to ask you the same thing. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good friends with a lot of people who are in the show originally, including George Salazar. And I, you know, would, would text George and be like, what the hell's going on with Be More Chill, dude? Are you, like, doing something? Or, and he's like, no, are you doing something and so we all sort of had this crazy experience in the the summer of 2017 where people just started discovering the show and it was the wildest like most organic 
uh, just the craziest thing that's ever happened to me for kind of no reason. You know, sort of it was like the miracle of like algorithms and social media and all that. But it really, it was just people uh, discovered it and liked it and were telling their friends. But Joe, yeah. was it because because of the album on Ghostlight? Or was it because of people making videos? Because of like, why? Like, what was it that was catching on online? Yeah, I mean, it was the album. It was 100% the album. And and the song Michael in the Bathroom tended to be people's gateway drug mm-hmm. to the show. They were discovering that song. And then they were like, oh, I like this. What is, you know, what show is this from? And then people were creating their own art based on the album. But if we never had the album, there just would have been nothing for people to connect to, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so, with, I mean, without the album, none of this ever would have happened. And, wow. and it just sort of took on took on a life of its own. And then like the crazy part is that I spent a, a good amount of time trying to get anyone interested in doing the show based on the, you know, the social media numbers and the excitement. And and uh, and it was really hard, you know, and that's a part of the story that hmm. I think is, is important for people, you know, anyone who might potentially be inspired by this to hear is that it wasn't the kind of thing where like our album exploded. And then all of a sudden all of Broadway wanted to do be more chill. <laughs> it truly was like, like pounding the pavement harder than I've ever pounded it, like to no avail for months and months and months and months. And just nobody cared, you know? And I was like, I was going into these meetings and saying like, we've got, you know, the, the 50 million streams. And truly people would just be like, oh, that's cute. How sweet that you think that means anything. You know, just like no no sort of awareness of, of how people receive, uh, you know, receive media today uh, which i don't you know i don't i don't i don't blame anybody for it's kind of the way it was so at any rate wait, wait, yeah. wait a second though between 2015 and 2017 mm-hmm. did you kind of like just say oh i had a great experience and that's it and i had a great album or like did you think that anything would come of it after that I knew nothing would come of it. I worked. <laughs> I mean, it's just that's like the way it works, you know. And I've I've had I've had so many other shows that have had the exact life path before and since. Be more chill. Uh, and so I know how it works, you know. And I'm I'm a very sort of theater literate guy. I've been you know going to shows since I was six years old, and I know how you know I know the kind of off Broadway shows or the kind of regional shows that transfer to New York and the kind that don't and the reasons why they do and they don't. Right. And so it was like, no, Be More Chill was done. And so I tried, yeah. I tried, I tried to get regional productions. Nobody wanted it yeah. because it had this, you know, sort of unfortunate, uh, you know, seal of disapproval from the times. And so I, I, I mourned it. I was, I was really depressed by it, but you know, the, the more I've sort of do this, the more I get used to, okay, well, sometimes you, you know, pour your heart into this thing for years and then it's just kind of over after a couple of weeks. And so, uh, and so I hoped I wanted it so bad, but I truly was like, this is never going to happen. You know, it was not even a, it, to me, it would have taken like miracle upon miracle upon miracle to get Be More Chill to New York City. And that's exactly what happened. That literally is what happened. You know, so so you were, so you were going to, to, I guess, to producers offices or like what, and you were saying how many views you had and then Mm -hmm. it was nothing. So what finally made, what, what finally happened that you were able to do it off Broadway? Yeah, so uh, Jerry Goring, who's uh, one of like the great the the great fellas ever. Uh, he's a, a commercial producer who I had known. I had a relationship with him, and because I had a relationship with him, uh, he decided to do be more chill at his at his uh, at his college. Uh, right, he's a college professor, and and uh, he was like, "Oh, I'm going to do this show with my students." And uh, and I, it'll be cool because I know Joe and maybe, you know, he can come in and like, you know, do a master class or something. And so he started doing Be More Chill with his students because Be More Chill was licensed before it ever got to New York. Mm-hmm. And so uh, and he was doing one of the first college productions. Um, and uh, and he saw how young people were connecting with the show firsthand. So that was happening with wow. him. Okay. I separately was talking to him about the show and because he saw how it actually affected young people, he was like, I think that like this actually might be something that could play. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, and if I didn't have a pre-existing wow. relationship with him, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I don't think he would have, he would have hopped on board, you know? Um, and, and, but he was the, he was the person who was willing to take a chance on this thing that no one else could even wrap their brains around how wow. it would work. And so as soon as Jerry signed up, uh, you know, my, my great friend, Jennifer Ashley Tepper, who I've worked with yeah. for years and years and years, she came on board and, uh, and Mike Mitri, uh, Jerry's partner. And we, we just did it in the you know summer of 2018 off Broadway, this commercial production. So when you, because Broadway happened not long after the off Broadway production, did you, when did you know that you were going to go to Broadway? Like at what point when you were off Broadway? 
It was um it it was it was a few weeks after opening. So we played like end of July through top of September in 2018. And basically what happened with our show was that our our sales were like insane for off Broadway. Like we had like yeah. it was like sell out, sell out, sell out in a way that like nothing sells out. So the sales were nuts. And 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 really all I wanted was to have a show in New York City. You know, I I had gone so long. My my last show in New York City was Blood Song of Love in 2010. And I was like, I just so desperately want this show to play in New York City. I want an off-Broadway run. I want a few weeks and I'll be happy. Uh, as soon as the sales started, then everybody was like, oh my God. This thing could this thing could go to Broadway. This thing could go to Broadway. <laughs> and I so desperately was like, Joe, do not get your hopes up. Do not get excited about this because it will only end in disaster. This will be a total disaster. Just be happy that this thing is going off Broadway. This is what you said you wanted. Do not get right. excited. Do not get your hopes up. And so, but of course, like enough people were talking about it that of course I was getting my hopes up. So then it was all like, okay. We're heading towards opening night, and the show was like the the entire run was sold out. Like by the time we started previews, and it was like momentum, momentum, momentum. And I was really excited, and it just felt like, oh, if this New York Times review this time is good, you're uh -huh. going because you got the you got the sales, you got it's all like momentum, momentum. It was feeling so good, uh, and so then we opened, and we got another terrible New York Times review, like another one. Like two, two totally separate reviews. So we got this other terrible New York Times Wait review. Wait a minute, from two different people, two different reviewers? Yeah, girl, sure did. Yeah. Jeez. Go I on. I could start a museum. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me ask you one thing, though. Had yeah. you changed the show since Two River? Yeah. Thinking like, oh, this time. Oh, so you had changed it. You're like, and this time they're going to love it. We worked on it. We like we hoped, you know, and like we knew all the reasons why we weren't necessarily like setting ourselves up for success because we had gotten a not great review and then we came in and then people were excited. But it was, you know, but but we were hoping and everyone was hopeful. And at that time, it felt like, oh, that's the key. That's the thing that's missing yeah. here yeah. in order to get this thing from being this like off Broadway culty thing to Broadway. Yeah. And so on, you know, so opening night of being more chill off Broadway, it was like it was so it was like one of my least favorite nights of all time. <laughs> because we got that review and a true and everyone was like people were coming up to me like, a, like it was a funeral like people were coming up to me like i'm so uh, so sorry buddy but you got this far and it was the most it was it was it was really rough um but then the magic thing that happened was that uh it, the review didn't matter off broadway and something that that often does happen is that when something something like a show like ours gets a bad review it changes the audiences it changes the excitement yeah. around the show um but no one cared no one wow. uh no one it didn't matter to anyone which was really nice and uh and people still wanted to you know come to see the show and uh and because of the you know the excitement and the enthusiasm for it and the 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 sort of love of the of the show by the fans of it uh we were able to to go to broadway and it's still something that i cannot believe that we did i cannot believe that we got to broadway and we played for you know as long as we did without having to like you know fire people and and star cast and without having to you know do all the things that you typically have to do in order to to have a go of it on broadway um yeah and it, re it remains the thing that is like the that's the most amazing thing to me that happened in the life of in the, the professional life of be more chill for sure and it like gives me hope which is so weird yeah. because it's my own thing you know but it's so i was just so sure it could never happen and yeah. i really felt like oh man this like this made, gave me hope and like you know weirdo little musicals finding their way Aww. to the big stage no, it's a great message. You know, I, I always talk about like career stuff and I think, oh, because I did this one thing 20 years ago, like I don't ever have to prove myself again. And I feel like for you, like you sh you can now always have hope because something amazing happened to you. Like you never have to be hopeless again. Yeah. Yeah. No, truly. And it's like, I, I you know, it's the, it's the cheesiest thing, but I, I remember, you know, the, the in the the days after opening off Broadway, I was like so I was so you know depressed and trying not to be depressed and all that. And uh, and Jennifer Ashley Tepper, my you know to who's like the the greatest. She every time she would she would be with me and we would talk about it. She would she would just say like no, we're not we're not doing that. We're not doing Aww. this thing that you're supposed to do. And like we got this, we got this. That's we're not so doing nice. that. And it's yeah. And I was like oh, it just it, and like she was right. You know, it's really <laughs> yeah. It was cool. Uh, well, speaking of not having star casting, these people are stars to us. Oh, George, yeah. <laughs> no, but I totally know what you mean. You don't have to bring in someone from like 90210. So anyway, by the way, that's my reference <laughs> Wow, point. you've aged yourself. <laughs> to play, to play. You, you mean tooth. the new one, right? The new one. The new one. So. <laughs> anyway, the point is yeah. here. Where we're, I'm looking at George's list. 
Now I'm supposed to bring on the following people. So where Mr. Tam? Thank you, Jason, the lovely Jason Tam. Hello. And Mr. Salazar, who put this whole thing together. That's right. Hi. Oh. George. Wait, he's frozen. There's a little circle. George, where'd you go? On. I'm gonna take him off for a second. And then we'll bring on Mr. Will, Will Rolanda. Hi, Will. Are hey, y'all. Hi. Will, your voice is placed so high, it is crazy. It just literally sits on a B flat. It's where it lives. It's where it lives. <laughs> it's it so lives right here. Hey, George is back, but it's right. It's such amazing placement. Here's Georgie Hi. Poo. Hi, Hi, George. Hi. Hi, George. Hi, you guys. This is so lovely. I wish <laughs> okay. we were all in a, a actual room together and not in our separate homes. But yep. what are you going to do? So, for people listening on Sirius XM, I would love someone to give a quick. Uh, um, say what the plot is and say who you guys played. Well, do it. All right. Um, uh, be more, Hi uh, be more Hill. Uh, it's been, it's been a year. <laughs> be more Hill, um, is the story of a, of a high school junior named Jeremy here, uh, who I played, um, who, uh, is a, is a, he's a loser. He's a nerd. He's had like a lot of obstacles in his life and he learns about this pill that he can take, which is a supercomputer that will implant in his brain and instruct him how to be more, chill um so that he can be cool and popular and well liked and, and get the girl and all the stuff that he's ever thought that he wanted uh this pill is going to do it for him so uh he takes it um and it ends up being this sort of uh you know this sort of high school technicolor sci-fi faust story um where you know he sort of becomes someone that he is not um and over the course of our musical uh learns to instead of uh instead of like hating everything that his that is weird about himself he learns like to love it and live with himself um and it's a story of like coming to terms with uh like who we are um and celebrating the things that make us uh strange um yeah george what about your character uh, i played michael mel uh who uh is jeremy's best friend who is kind of unabashedly weird and loves all things like vintage and retro. Um, I ended up actually getting a Pac-Man tattoo in real life. Uh, so I didn't have to paint it on every day at the show. Um, I hope you got it. Hold on, George. I hope you got the tattoo before the show closed. I did. I did. I okay. got it. I got it. I got it right before we started performances off. Oh, perfect. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I was and, there. Yeah, oh. Will was there. I was there. I, I was, supervised. I took some pictures. <laughs> I was very nervous about this one. Um, and so, uh, you know, he's he's really kind of comfortable with himself, and he's totally okay with only having one friend. Um, and the, the Jeremy and Michael are 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 you know um, best buds. And then once Jeremy takes this pill um, and and gets manipulated and changed by uh, the squip uh, played by the brilliant Jason Tam. Um, uh, Jeremy uh, kind of uh, forgets about Michael and Michael is kind of abandoned and left behind. Um, but then Michael ends up coming in and saving the day at the very end of the show. Uh, of course, um, like all, that's like my character. Nerds. What? Like all nerds, saving the day yes. at the end. <laughs> Deus es machina. And Jason, in your amazing um, onesie or jumpsuit, who do you play? <laughs> in my onesie, I'm currently wearing a, a shirt that one. was that was oh it, well this shirt was made by my friend Tamika who I just have to do a shout out to because she started a business it's called Ready Set Wear and it's my new favorite shirt in loving memory of 2020. I um, love that. It's hilarious. That shirt's amazing. You know, I meant your outfit. It sort of looked like you were wearing a unitard with like a cape. I wore some. I wore some like really cool, crazy stuff by by Bobby Tilly. He he, his imagination is just off the charts. But and that's the place where the show really got to embrace the whole sci-fi tonal aspect of it was through his character. Um, it uh, stands for Super Quantum Unit Intel Processor Squip, <laughs> um, and uh, I played the visual representation of that supercomputer chip in Jeremy Hear's brain. And so I coached him on, you know, I, I, I showed, I opened up his eyes and I showed him that everybody at school, even the cool kids all had weaknesses and they all doubted themselves to a certain extent the same way that uh, Jeremy did. And so I showed him how to uh, manipulate and use those characteristics uh, to help Jeremy climb up that social ladder. And so 
at first everything's going great and, and he's getting everything that he wants. And then slowly, I hope I'm not, you know, spoiling anything, but over the course of the show, the squip uh, through its observations of the rest of the world uh, comes to the conclusion that the best way to eliminate all of the human suffering, which is basically like everybody that exists is, is uh, uh, to a certain extent plagued by uh, uh, um, feelings of depression and anxiety and, and all of these things. The best way to eliminate that is to squip everybody, um, whether they want to be squipped or not, which is sort of, uh, you know, crossing a very dangerous line. Um, so then the squip becomes the villain in the end and, and, and uh, there's, there's a huge fight a sci-fi fight. Um, it's just the best. It's a hoot. So is the riffing. Hey, listen, um, <laughs> Joy Hannes, did you just get a text from me? I did. Yeah. Okay. So you, by the way, we can only fit 10 people in the studio. So George has you signing off in a moment, but I would love you to read the donations. Sorry, George is in charge, but I want you to read the donations. So everybody watching these donations that Joe is reading is from you all. And it's all going to the actress fund to help anybody in the arts, wherever they live, whatever they do, literally pay for their groceries, medical bills and rent. And this is just some that we've gotten so far. Um, did, should I read like the little blur? Yes. You know what? Hey, Joe, hold on. Which one is which? The one I just sent to Joe. Yeah, okay, yeah, go. You read it all. Yeah, read okay. it all. Okay, we got Hallie from Massachusetts. Uh, I saw one of the last Be More Chill performances on Broadway and we'll never forget it. Uh, me neither. I, I was there. The, mm -hmm. she thanks to the Be More Chill cast, Seth and James, for everything you do. Uh, Aaron from Arizona, a bunch of A's, very cute. Saw the show during World Pride weekend and was blown away by the music and the cast, especially George and Tiffany. Smiley face, lipstick. <laughs> Kitty Paw. Sydney from New York, who's got nothing to say, but gave a lot of money. Thanks, Sydney. Uh, David from Florida. Thank you for all you've done throughout the last six months to keep us sane. Um, yeah, I think that was to Seth and James, not to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> the cast album. Maybe, we maybe album. listening to the cast album, Joe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Sarah from somewhere. Thanks for your 20 bucks, Sarah. Karen from Boston. Uh, thanks for the cash. Rebecca from Cleveland. Uh, she loves Be More Chill uh, and is working on Squip cosplay. Amazing. Uh, full support. And finally, Colin and Charlotte from Ireland. Uh, we are a dad and daughter uh, and fans from Ireland watching tonight. It's 2.46 a.m. and it's a school night. I like it. Very, um, yeah. <laughs> Great parenting. Love it. I uh, saw the show three nights running during the final week last year and just had to listen in tonight. Thanks for coming to see the show from Ireland. Aww. Thanks for joining. How wonderful. Thank you for donating. Joe, thank you for your O rating. Which is good because I think Joe is frozen, so it was perfect. He's back. Oh, no, he's now no, he's, he's back. back. Okay. Um, Joe, we love you. We'll bring you back for a smash reunion next time. <laughs> Can't I miss what you turned to a robot. I miss what you just said. I think I think Joe's Basically, timing is perfect. Joe, thank you very much. Peace out. Love you. Thanks for having a great show. Absolutely. Bye, Joe. <laughs> Bye, Joe. Enjoy Vermont. <laughs> okay, so Will with the high placement. My first question is: Did you literally ever leave the stage? Um. Yeah. So I had a uh, I had a a forty second break about an hour into the first act. <laughs> Um, and then, and then I had like a minute later in the act that was, that was good too. Um, and then I got to Peter and Michael in the bathroom in the second act. So that was oh, but right. overall, like in the two and a half hours I spent, uh, like including intermission, I like 15 minutes off stage. Did you love, I sort of like it. Like when a show begins, like I'm just there forever. Like, did you like that? Just, you're just there. Oh yeah. No, it was great. It, it, it was, it was like, um, the thing that was awesome about it was I actually had like, uh, for, for a variety of reasons, completely unrelated to theater. And, and also because of theater, I had like a really hard summer last year. Um, and so the show was this incredible, uh, sort of meditation for me where I got to sort of like step over that threshold and like it didn't matter what the fuck was going on because like i had to get my act together and do the show like that was it there was no yeah. other option there was no ability to be distracted it was not available to me and what about voce wise like i was just like listening to it and i'm like it's so much singing like is that but i feel like you are one of those people that genetically is just born with a perfectly placed voice like so was everything just kind of easy for you 
I um well I I have uh, genetic advantages um but I also have a very expensive music degree um and uh, <laughs> that was um that that's really what I what I owe it all to um but no it was it was um I mean the show was learning the sort of the shape of it and where to sort of pull back and where I could sort of go full tilt. Um, and then all the stuff that I had to do outside of the theater, um, you know, I, I sort of people would ask me all the time, like, oh, my God, like, how do you like how do you like take care of your voice? Um, and I was like, oh, I, uh, and they always wanted like some sexy answer. I was like, oh, it's all oregano oil. But like it, it was like it was a lot of boring stuff like sleeping and hydrating and like. Uh, I found that like m meal timing is the most important thing for me in like a in like a trying Broadway show. Like if I eat too early, then like we get to intermission and I'm starving. And if I eat too late, I got like all sorts of phlegm and stuff. So it was all about meal timing. It really was so impressive because like not only just the singing part of it, but you the character that you were playing, Jeremy here, was written to basically have an exclamation point after every single line <laughs> that he said. And not, and like, not only that, but you were screaming, you know, like uh, he, uh, basically like once every other every other page jeremy here had to scream for at some one of my proudest accomplishments is that track on the album that's just 90 seconds of me screaming <laughs> and like <laughs> you talking in my ear that was that was like <laughs> that's one of my proudest things i've ever done yeah, yeah. Hey, hey jason, jason and will we're we're, we're gonna we're bring gonna... you two back okay. because i gotta follow george's schedule here <laughs> good all right i don't want to get guys, why, why is nobody shitting on george for doing all the planning thank you george yes. thank you keeping us on jason. track so Jason, we'll see you in a minute, and we'll hold on. Bye, Will. Will. Bye, Jason. And who are we bringing on? I think we're bringing on Britain. Yeah. Am I right, George? Am I on track yes. here? Yes. And George. and Tiffany. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Hi. 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 Oh, <laughs> Tiffany, you look beautiful. Thank Hi, you. Tiffany. Hi, Britain. So hey, for yo. those people watching at home, can you tell everybody who you played in the show? Uh, I am Tiffany Mann, and I play Jenna Rowland. Uh, Jenna Rowland was sort of on the unpopular side of things, but to find her way into the popular crowd, she spread all the gossip. She had all the hottest tea on everybody, and she spread it, and they gave me a big production number in Act 2 to, to really talk about it. It was great. Yes, they and, and she was also a Payless customer. Britton, what about <laughs> you? Britton, what about you? Um, I'm Britton Smith. I played Jake Dillinger. I was, uh, you know, the normal, sexy, handsome, rich high school jock that I am in real life. Matching so many ladies in the school grounds, playing all the fucking sports, you know, who I really am in life. It was great. Well, who I right. really am in life. That's right. Well, that is what I'm interested in knowing. Like, Everyone's sort of, I feel everyone wants to relive high school. Was it delicious, Britain, to relive it and be like, now I get to, I mean, I don't know if you were popular or not, but was it like amazing to relive it as like the star of the whole high school? Did you love it? I loved being aware of the mask we play, even cool kids. I loved being aware of that. I wasn't aware of it when I was being right. cool in high school, but like it was nice to be like, Britain, put on this mask and be cool as show of the week. That was fun, yeah. Wow. Hey, George, I know you wanted this segment. We had, we've had uh, Broadway Advocacy Coalition on the show before, wow. but we with, wanted the, with the founder. That's right. But George, you want to take it away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to like live in the nostalgia of a Be More Chill reunion, but I also wanted to shine some light on some of the work that's happening with uh, with our amazing cast members, with Britton and Tiffany, with BAC, but also Morgan Green, who was a swing on our show, who couldn't be here today. But um, I w just wanted to um, thank them for all the work that they've been doing over these last couple months with BAC. Um, Morgan uh, started this, um, this Instagram TV series called Middleborough High Summer School. And um, I wanted to just, she wrote this little blurb and she couldn't be here today. So I, I just wanted to read this, but her main idea behind the summer school series was instead of giving our young fans more lanes for protests, revolution and information about social climate, they know it already. They are teaching yeah. us in fact, we decided to be sure our young fans were exposed to black folks in various fields, science, education, writers, teachers, and of course, artists. No censorship, no policing, just letting black folks be in fellowship uh, for anyone following the accounts to be exposed to. Um, she asked, how do we engage with young people who may be in a home full of racists? How do we engage with young people who think because they have a black friend, they're doing enough? 
How do we engage the thought that being anti-racist is a lifelong journey? Uh, how do we center black voices from education, from writing, from creative arts, and challenge white audience members to see themselves even when they don't see themselves? Uh, these are questions I continuously ask myself and I'm working on understanding better in order to effectively bring the resources and voices forward that I think will be most beneficial. I believe that it's important that audiences see and hear from black voices in this moment because to give them information without amplifying a black informer is a little dangerous. I've seen the, alter, the, uh, the after effects of needing to hear a white person say something first before it's believed or even considered. And so Morgan teamed up with our producers um, to bring uh, black professionals from various industries in for conversations and share them on, on the Be More Chill Instagram account. And the videos live on the IGTV page um, if you follow at Be More Chill Musical. And the conversations were a true gift. Uh, they gave young people from all sorts of small pockets across the world access um, and, and an unfiltered glimpse into, um, into these journeys. Um, and so I just wanted to thank Morgan for putting that together. Um, and I also want to thank our producers for giving her the platform to do that. Um, and I wanted to have Britton and Tiffany here because yes, you've had BAC on, but I wanted to have them on uh, and, and shine some light on BAC specifically for the young people who are tuning into this episode that right. may not have caught that episode. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Can you tell me the website? Cause I just want to put it up. Is it probably advocacy coalition.org? Uh, B-Way Advocacy Coalition.org. And shout out to you, Morgan. I hope you're watching and we love what you're doing. And I think that's really dope and necessary. Everything mm -hmm. doesn't have to be heavy to be impactful. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Brynn, I'm interested. Like the role that you played was was the character supposed to be black? Did you go in? You know, a lot of times you're like, it has to be black or it has to be white. What how did you get the part? Dude, that's a great question, man. Great question. Um, I don't, um, I don't remember if the role was always black or meant to be black. And it's funny now because I'm in conversations with many producers who have since George Floyd's murder been like, Hey, BAC, we have this show that's all white and we don't want to be messed around, but how can we, and I'm like, dude, the answer is not filling in this role with a black person. Right. The answer is making black lives matter with that role and making that that person's blackness matter beyond their skin. So yeah. I will say that I'm not sure about Joe's intention about it being a black character, but I felt like I had a lot of room in the room to make him not just the color black. Like I love it when I see somebody in a 360 black experience and I was able to have that license and it was important for me to have that. Yeah, it's so yeah, many they, times, oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna say so many times you'll see like, Character description, character description, and then just like a black friend. Like, that's not a character. Like, it drives me crazy when they think just like being like, well, the person's black is like, but who is the person? Anyway, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say, Tiffany? I, know, I was gonna uh, uh, piggyback off of Britain and say that the, the creators really gave us a lot of room to sit down and have conversations because uh, my particular character was played by brilliantly by a white woman prior to me. And some of the interactions between my character and some of the other characters in the show feels a little different because of you know the skin that I'm in and who I am. And so they were very gracious in sitting us down and like, okay, let's talk about this, let's flesh this out, let's understand what this means in this show. So and you have to be willing if you hire a black actor to center their voices. You can't just be like, oh, I'm hiring you, like wear this jersey and be cool about it. I texted Bobby Tilly and I was like, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. It also says in the book that I'm wealthy, that I'm smart, and you put me in jersey and chains, dog, come on. So we had a whole conversation and he was very willing to have a drink with me and sit down and like figure out, okay, so what are, what are some things that are happening right now? Like, okay, so make me have a jersey that has like Colin Kaepernick on it. And he made him very thoughtful. Oh but there are some producers who were like, you're lucky to be here, get to work. And that was mm -hmm. not the case in Be More Too. So nice. So Tiffany, you know, you were talking about just, just to talk about your performance, talk about your solo in act two. <laughs> we kind of have to just talk about that for a second because. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> okay. The, it's one of those things, you remind me of Lilius White in the sense that when I was doing How to Succeed. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> I remember doing How to Succeed and I was like, Oh my God, she sounds amazing, belting that C. And then I went to the piano and I was like, it's an F? So my point is like, you're so comfortable. I literally, do you know you belted an E at the end of your phrase? I literally tested it. <laughs> yes. Um, She's like, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> no, 
I mean, I live up there. That's the, you know, just like you were commenting on Will, like he lives in a certain place and that I kind of live in those notes. That's, that's my happy space. Uh huh. Did you ever, were you ever like matinee down the octave? Not, not, not down the octave, but I always have a plan B because, you know, growing up in church, you, you figure out how to, you know, service starts at eight o'clock in the morning. And so you might not have some of those high things. So I've always learned how to have like a plan A and then like a, like a riff down plan B. <laughs> okay. People don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to play the clip right now. Yes! Oh yeah. What's so amazing is that you, yeah. you get to the E, but your placement, it's like you spin it. Like there's literally no, yeah, it's literally spun. It's so brilliant. I mean, I'm obsessed with it. Okay, even the first, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm like a Briton. <laughs> That's right. Here in a movie, baby. <laughs> Literally. Play it back. Play it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch this. I, I... Do it again. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, Tiffany, you like made such an incredible impression on Broadway. Like, was this your Broadway debut? No. No, uh, my Broadway debut was Waitress, but this was my first time originating a role. I mean, like, you put in a key where now every non equity performer is going to be like, great, vocal damage. No, make it your own. Make it your own. Make it your own. Do your thing. Do your thing. Right on the house. <laughs> Yo, I gotta say, it's a BAP trait because her and Adrian Warren and Adrian and like Amber Mon, like Adrian Warren and Tina goes Eow! eight shows a week, and Tiffany and can do this. I think it's about black voices who are here for the people. <laughs> at this store. Yes, this is you gotta join in order to have that placement. So there you go, <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> it's right down there. It's easy to join. Oh my gosh! Okay. Okay. Next segment here. We're, we're, okay, we have to go to the next there's segment. There's so many people now. Where there's this is so complicated because we're only allowed to have ten people on the platform. Period. Yeah, they, and not, there's definitely more than ten people. We didn't freak out too much, George. Are you out, George? You can take me out if you, if you need space. Well, we're gonna, for like we may, 30, we'll be bringing minutes. you back though. Okay, yeah. wait. It says you'll so, you'll be on standby. Oh, David's David's nodding okay. yes, George. So okay, so George, you peace out for now. But you need to come okay, back. We need to discuss about your you amazing be performance. Be on standby. <laughs> okay, I can't ah! stop doing this. You know what? We can just play it again while you're trying to figure out. Who's yeah, you know, watch. Play it again while I mean, we just bring people. It's on just board. I've never heard anything <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay that's david by the way david katz tech person i gotta boot you because one person's trying to get into the studio so david boot yourself please hey everybody that's here for Hello. our series i great seeing you Yay. cast reunion so for oh. our serious xm oh. listeners let us figure out who what everyone did i i think there's even some swings here right i'm so excited so caitlin what was your track as we say uh, I was Chloe Valentine, the alpha bitch queen bee of Middleborough. Hi. She was trouble. She was trouble. <laughs> um, yes, and you wind up dating Mr. Will Rowland. Am I correct? Not really. I uh, kind of swooped in to uh, blow up some lives in a very ill-informed teenage drama move. So I uh, got real drunk at the Halloween party and smooched him. 
But it was all to make Jake jealous. What, wait, which one were you dressed as? Were you the, no, you're not the prince. No, not the princess. You were was, um, uh, the sexy, sexy dog. baby. Sexy, right. <laughs> Wonderful. Gerard, who are yeah. you? Uh, I played Rich Garansky. He uh, he was kind of like I don't I, I mean he sort of evolved he he was kind of like a loner but like sort of drifted around the school but was definitely creepy and definitely a bully to uh, Will Rowland's character Jeremy um, but you find out pretty early on in the show and if you listen to the album that he in fact used to be a nerd in his eyes uh, and took the squip so uh, what I loved about Rich is that he's kind of like if you ever read Flowers for Algernon he's like. Algernon the mouse, you like watch his downfall and you're like, oh boy, it's coming. Oh my so, God, Flowers for Algernon, that's devastating. Yeah. Sure, that's deep as hell. Cameron is here. Hold on, I got to bring Cameron up too. Hold on. Cameron. Yeah. yeah. Cameron. What's up? Entrance. <laughs> we have every window filled. Okay, Lauren, dear. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Lauren. I played Brooke Lost. Um, first, I want to say really nice flowers for Algernon reference. Thank you. <laughs> I'm impressed by that. We spent a lot of years with this musical, so, you know. So you've had time to think about it, yeah. Yeah, so much time. Um, I played Brooke Lowe's, who's kind of um, second in command to uh, Katie's Chloe. And Brooke actually ends up dating Will for a spell of time. Um, she just, you know, she kind of falls for him. The squip tells, tells him to go for her, for the second most popular girl. And um, I drank a lot of seltzer and threw a banana. <laughs> what was the seltzer supposed to be? Oh, it wasn't supposed to be anything. It was that I couldn't stop eating or drinking during rehearsals. So then they just like let me do it in the show too. <laughs> <laughs> and you, it was legitimately seltzer on stage. You weren't I like- mean, oh. It was legitimately LaCroix cans. Um, in, in Two River, fun fact, it was iced coffee because I was into iced coffee then. And then, I, you know, I tried to get healthier. Um, so then it was seltzer. So I was just allowed to do that <laughs> the whole time. I want that track. Yeah, Jason fun. Sweet Tooth. You were many adults. Yes, I was all the adults. I was every adult in the show. Um, notably, uh, Jeremy's dad. So I was Will's dad, Mr. Here. And I was Mr. Ray as the um, high school drama teacher as well. And I also played the squip dealer, which was like probably my my biggest uh, stress as an actor. And, um, and I made a couple other crosses as randos in in the world of the show as well. Um, are yeah. you actually are you actually a hot pocket fan? I mean, I'll eat anything that I can microwave with cheese in it. So yes, but um, you know, it's funny. I would like. I became like really into Hot Pockets because uh, Mr. Reyes ate Hot Pockets and um, Hot Pockets like became aware of this and they sent me like all of these Hot Pockets. So it's like the best like like tie in that ever happened to me. And so um, Be More Chill is responsible for my high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, were you getting LaCroix, LaCroix seltzers? No, I wasn't. I think that Hot Pockets, maybe, I don't know, Jason, I, maybe they needed it at the time. I think LaCroix was a big reach. Like, I don't know if you're that LaCroix. You know, Hot Pockets, premium like, brand. <laughs> and Jason, did you know you were going to be foreshadowing all this StreamYard Zoom pandemic stuff by not wearing pants all the time? I mean, basically, you foreshadow what we're all doing. No, I've always been a leader in non-pants wearing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so I had no idea I would be this influential, um, but here we are, and I'm actually not wearing pants. I mean, I'm wearing something, but not pants. That's information that our viewers will want to know. Can you pan your camera down, dear? Uh oh, you don't, you, you don't want to see it. I think, <laughs> I think <laughs> we're done. home alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, all right, and Cameron, who were uh, you in the show? I was a standby. For uh, whom? I stood by for Jason Sweet too, Jason Tam and Britton Smith. So uh, Squip, Jake, and the dad, the dad entirety. How's that uh, for range? Come on, range. Yeah, it was dang. a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I was also the I'm the youngest male member of the cast, and I I covered the oldest person and one oh, of the yeah. youngest. My so, young young father. Very young father. Um, yeah, they put some gray in my hair, and uh, we did we did my version of a father to someone older than myself. Talk about what a standby is versus an understudy. 
Uh, so standby is someone who only covers principles. So our show, since only 10, 10 uh, uh, characters, that we were all on principal contracts. So that's like more of like a technical term for the business of theater is when you're only covering principles, uh, you are a standby. So if you have uh, ensemble tracks, then you are considered a swing because you're covering both principles and ensemble parts. And understudies are actually in the show. Standbys are literally standing by. Yes. So if you're understudy, you're also in the show. And then standbys, our only job is to stand by when uh, the show must go on, that the, uh, the regular uh, cast member can't show up that day. So when you're not when you're not on, you're just like backstage looking at. You yeah, know, you're, like, challenged, you're challenged with like the the cycle of being productive, being watching, and wanting to like be like noting the show. And then after like the hundredth time, you're like, okay, I can't watch this show anymore. Uh, so you start trying to you know you go through the cycle of like being a paid artist, but like it, it's 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 the most challenging thing. I I recommend every performer. Uh, to try it because you learn a lot about yourself, you learn about about the industry, and I, I'm lucky to have done it to now know what it's like. And uh, and you're done doing it. That's what I can tell. I must be covering like freaking the most. Like you know, ideally, no, it's not fulfilling for me. Um, you know, we, yeah, that's that's my. I hear you. Hey, um, by the way, it's pronounced Caitlin, even though it's spelled Catlin. That's correct. I love it. It's so I I love cool spellings of names. So Caitlin and Lauren, was it cool getting to play Biatches? <laughs> um yeah, I mean I would argue that Lauren's character wasn't much of a Biatch and she was I don't want to speak for Brooke, but um yeah, it was definitely fun to play the mean girl because that was not my experience in high school. So it was uh yeah, it was interesting to kind of dig into that mentality and try to see um, see someone like that as not a villain because no one's the villain of their own story. Yeah, why? So what was your subtext? My mom was mean to me, therefore I? Um, I think, you know, it's been a while since I thought about Chloe's subtext. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, she's an insecure teenager and she's, uh, you know, she gets as jealous as anyone else and she's uh, easily shaken by feeling like she's not maintaining that high status. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's competitiveness and jealousy um, and unexpected jealousy and competitiveness with her best friend who seems like <clears throat> the comfortable beta to her alpha. Uh, very, I love it. Very, very subtextual. Lauren, what about you, dear? Did you um, enjoy reliving high school? I mean, what I've lived was nothing like my high school experience. Um, I would never classify my, classify myself as a popular person. I think it was more of a theater nerd. Um, so it was very wild um, to reinvent myself, kind of what, what I thought might be a popular person. I think she got a lot weirder than what might actually be popular, but I had a lot of fun. Um, I had a lot of fun and I had a great wig. So the audience. Hey, Britton, people are wondering um, in the comments, are you vibing in your shower? <laughs> Yo, people on the private channel like, Britton, you have in your shower. I dare you to I am. I thought it was appropriate because we're still in the bathroom. <laughs> That's not your damn song. You're stealing George's material. Um, <laughs> Gerard, what's happening with the cats? You have a. <laughs> I have a dog, but she's as, she's like smaller than a cat, so it makes sense that one would think she's a cat. No, no, you know, you're not cat. Tattoo. Oh, tattoo. I thought she was running around. Oh, I have I have a whole bunch now. I have like eighteen now. Eighteen. Do any of them say Seth? I heart Seth. Not yet. This <laughs> whole time, I got a lot of space. This whole left arm. First, I love it. Hey, by the way, viewers, I'm loving all the donations. I hope you know where to donate. But we keep getting them. Starsinthehouse.com. Or for you youngins, you can actually text. By the way, why can all the young people text? But you can text it to, what is it, James? Donations? Oh, God, I always get this mixed up. It's, it's Fun streaming. 2020 Fun 56512. Fun 2020 to 56512. That's right. Okay, hold on. We have to bring in different people now. Well, no, I, I, yes, but I think this is, we're saying oh. sayonara to Will and quite a few people, but Will's going to sing. Will, you're ending with a song. Yeah, but don't be shocked because I begged you and you said yes. I know. I was hoping maybe you'd forget. I was no, like, oh, girl. Girl. 
like the wrong thing. Uh, you all no, um, yeah, I'm gonna sing. Okay, I'm gonna I, mute everybody except for I you. have prepared a song. <laughs> so Britain, put on your shower. You want to see the water trickling as he sings. So here we go. <laughs> okay, hold on. Jason, you can full split. Okay. <laughs> Tiffany, burn up a Okay, there. She's gone. And then I got to mute Sweet Tooth and Lauren and Mr. Tattoos. I heart Seth. And we'll take us out. And we'll go. Okay. All right. Um, I, I prepared this song, uh, because, uh, I, I could not get it together to sing something from Be More Chill in this moment. Um, and, uh, it's just like, I, this is like a song that I like to hear and like to sing. So here we go. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, they're only illusions, and rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told, and some choose to believe it, I know they're wrong, wait and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the morning star. Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? It's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. All of us under its spell We know that it's probably magic Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name Is this the sweet sound that calls the young sailors? The voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. La da da dee da da do. La da 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 da. Dee da do. It has a very long outro. <laughs> We're all as stupid as that. Uh, yay! I missed you guys. <laughs> Britain be the ringer of the stupid. <laughs> yay! <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, such a pretty voice. All right, we have oh, people. Man. 
The placement is so high. We have people clamoring to come to the studio. That was so beautiful. We're going to do a little swing segment. So we got to get rid of some of you amazing people. That's right. So we're saying goodbye to some. So guys, thank you. Bye, Will. <laughs> and then we're going to bring on some more people. Bye, Tiffany. Some of you we're going to bring back. We're following George's wonderful schedule. I, I, yeah, we are. I'm not the truth. <laughs> so, Jason, you're staying around, but we're going to bring you. You're just going to be around, but not on screen. That's we're going right. to bring you back. Bye, Caitlin. Bye, Caitlin. Bye, Caitlin. Ah, uh, uh, Lauren and Joe. Oh, uh, so sweet. Look at that. Ooh. And Gorgeous. where's George Salazar? Because he's going to be donations. I know. I, just well, I think he's going to be he's coming, coming on. on. Cameron, you're coming on in a second. So, That's Cameron, right. don't go anywhere. That's right. Um, okay, so George Salazar is coming on, but I might as well bring Cameron on because we're going to do a swing segment. Oh, okay. Right. So then when George comes on, then we'll just we'll send him. We yes. guess we got oh, this great donations. Troy is in the last segment. No, Troy's part of this. So bring on Troy. He's right there. Troy. Hi, Troy. Oh, where did he go? There he is. Hi, Troy. Hi, Troy. Uh, hi. <laughs> You're part of our swing segment, according to George. How many times, Troy, were you trying to get into the studio? Every two seconds, just clicking it. It was it was <laughs> like fun this. constantly seeing it flash on yeah. our screen. I didn't so, get to enjoy uh, the singing. <laughs> okay, hey, we're gonna bring on. on Talia. Where the hell is George? George? Hi. Oh no, George is right here. Where the hell are you, George? Hi, Georgie. Hey. Hi, you guys. Hey. Hi. Hi. George, Hi. you give donations to everybody. Catch up later. Yes. Here we go. Sorry, son. Morgan from Pennsylvania donated eleven dollars and eleven cents. Make a wish. This eleven eleven is for Will Roland and Will Roland only. But unfortunately, the money goes to the Actors Fund. I don't think Will Roland needs anything from the Actors Fund. Megan, five dollars. My friend says Ella says George Salazar, you're my role model. Be more chill. And Michael in the bathroom mainly has helped me more than you can imagine. Megan, I love you. I hope you're staying safe. Uh, Kimberly from Wisconsin, five dollars for all you magic things. Thank you. Uh, Amy, $36. Be more chill with such an immense accomplishment. New York Times reviews, be damned. Um, <laughs> Grace from Ohio, $6. I found the show through TikTok and it has meant so much to me. Let it be known that the changes made to the pitiful children made it so much better. Uh, thank you for your insight, Grace. Alicia, uh, $20. My family and I have been to the show eight times and are obsessed with it. Thank you, Alicia. And Jessica from California, $25. Everyone here are such idols and so inspirational. Uh, you guys basically created my love for theater. Um, thank you all so much for donating. And if anyone can, head over to bwayadvocacycoalition.org and make a donation there as well. Okay, that's all. There you go. Which is, by the way, that. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're talking about swinging and not the kind of swinging I did in the 70s. What? Hello. We're talking about being... <laughs> Just kidding, guy. Anybody? Uh, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. Key party, key parties. Nobody. Okay, so Troy, I know Hi. that Cameron. Cameron covered everybody that was seventy-five years and older. Troy, <laughs> who did you cover? Ever all uh, the infants. Uh, yeah. Um, I covered I covered Jeremy, uh, Michael, and Rich, and then off Broadway I covered uh, Jake. And then I like to think that I almost went on for Tiffany once, but I I didn't. Hold on. By the way, I think Joel is here. Joel is part of this section. Yeah, Joel, you're Joel. here. Joel. Hey, Joel, hey, Joel are, you, are you are you are watching, you watching on something, something else? else? Because you're, you're, you're echoing. Because you're echoing. Oh, uh, yes. Hold on. I got it. Do you? Hold for Joel. Talia, why don't you tell us who you swung? <laughs> yes, I swung for all of the ladies. Um, and off Broadway, I swung for three out of four ladies. And actually, Lauren Marcus covered uh, Christine. So, but you've also covered Elphaba, am I correct? I I played Elphaba on the national I know. tour. So yeah, You're before pissed. we uh, before you were we the best Elphaba in the world, according to Joseph Shiro. Thank you, Joseph. That's Joseph so is too. He yeah, he's up, 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 up. How is your F, vibrato or straight tone? Oh, it depends on the night. Depends yeah. on the night, you know? But we try to give it a good spin. And you know? were you an F riffer defying or a defying gravity? They're pretty strict with that now. So so they're so no. The answer would be no. Straight. So just straight. no straight. written flag. As written. Yeah. yeah. Curious. Joel, what was your gig? What was my gig? 
I covered Sweet Tooth. I covered Sweet Tooth. I uh, played the dad, and actually, poor guy hurt himself the day before the Tonys, and I ended up going on from June eighth to July sixteenth. So I ended up having wait a minute, wait a minute. He hurt himself, or showgirl style? <laughs> there was an incident on the stage during the production. Um, yes, it was. It was a very. It was an I comma Joel situation i tanya no he did hurt himself um it's it, there's a lot to do in that show even for the dad teacher part there was a lot yeah. of really on running off yeah and we're thick remember? and we're thicker boys we have to carry around some stuff so i think you, know. they had, you guys had that track had like 14 15 quick changes in it wow yeah they were, i think everyone had a lot of quick changes but yeah these were the the, the underwear was my favorite. I loved just that costume. It was so easy to, you know, it's pretty much what I'm wearing during the pandemic anyway, so. Of course. <laughs> Who was the first swing to go on and how early did you go on? Troy? Yeah. Troy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I did you on, go on? I started going on in preview, previews. Okay, I want theater, young theater people out there to learn that because producers sort of pretend, oh, you won't be going on until after opening night and they don't really rehearse you and almost yeah. everyone I know has to go on during previews. So how come you were smart enough to learn your track that early? Um, well, I c already covered it off Broadway, so I already had I already had a leg up there. Um, did I have any warning? I don't remember. Uh, Cause uh, George got sick. Uh, and so I think there was a little bit of warning ahead you of time. You got there, right? I don't know. I really don't remember. I already did the part before off Broadway, so I did it twice before and there were just like minute changes. Um, but I mean, I've always been really fast at picking up things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes I would drop something on the floor and Troy would and just it, like it get would, it. It wouldn't even hit the ground. You just get it. <laughs> yeah. It's so literal. Okay, hold on. I want to make sure I'm sticking to schedule. Okay, wait. Talk about swings. Okay, and then what time is it? Hold on. I need to stick Troy, 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 uh, Troy also eats goldfish with chopsticks out of a, of a glass. We shared, a, we shared a dressing room cubicle. We'll call it a dressing room. Yeah, cubicle. Our closet. We yeah. should have had a reality TV show take place because it was just six people crammed in one room backstage like just him. hating yeah. each other. Exactly. This should have been a yeah. cam. So they yeah. took Peter Rivera's old dressing room from the visit and cut it into into three cubicles for us. As if we're one sixth of Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> I'll know? take I'll buy stock in that. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take <laughs> she's she's gonna outlive us all. Yeah. Okay, so wait, before we leave you guys, Talia, I just have to know, did you ever, ha did you ever have a quote-unquote no-fly show in Wicked? I have not yet. But I'm excited to have one. I think that would be fun. Would it? I love when stuff goes wrong in shows. I think it just keeps you in it, you know? Once you actually know it. And speaking of you swingies, did you guys, did you guys ever just black out on stage? I'm not going to lie. I called out, this is so bad. I came back. I came back too early from being sick because I was like, I have to go back. I have to go back. I'm playing the role. I'm playing the role. And I said my first two lines in the first two minutes of the stage. I walked across the stage and I sat down in the booth and I swear to God, like I got the vapors. I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so I called out. I called out two minutes into the show and Cameron, so, and then Cameron. So I went in and, and uh, you know uh, the teacher and father lost you know forty pounds in a matter of a minute. Yeah. I called out two minutes in. My friend Michael Lee Scott always does a bit from a chorus line where he goes like it's like da 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 da. I'm out. And then uh -huh. knitting backstage. I'm in, but I just love the knitting. So wait, it's two minutes in. It's so lazy. Brava. And yeah. by the way, I love the expression of the vapors. It's so 1800s. It's like no <laughs> exactly. I did. But please hire me. I did all the shows after that. Everything's fine. But I just, Sorry. I just saw in. the rest. I saw the rest of the show in front of me, and I thought, I just, I can't put that on myself. <laughs> I totally get it. Oh, oh someone yeah. has a question here. I don't think it's too personal since we're all under union con uh, union contracts here. Are you swings paid more than the rest of the ensemble? They really have the most difficult job on Broadway. Okay. How it's broken down is there is a minimum salary uh, for ensemble. And then what they do is each role is kind of tiered. Uh, so you, you get paid a certain amount per ensemble role you cover and a certain amount of principal role you cover. So the more people you cover, you can tack on 
more payments there. There's also room for negotiations, obviously, on that minimum, but traditionally it is like a minimum and then there's like tiered add-ons. Any hazard pay in this show? There should be. <laughs> but no. Yeah, sure. I feel like every show has like some some sort of, you know, hazard pay of like, uh, you're performing and there's a risk involved. Here's 15 more dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, even just like dignity wise, there's a there's a risk. The eight, hazard, uh, $8 for moving a set of lockers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The hazard pay has been the fact that I have been on unemployment from Be More Chill for an entire year, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Equity. Um, yeah. All right, so Swings, we love you. You do the hardest job on Broadway. I'm going by Georgia's schedule. Thank you so much for being here Thank tonight. You, Good night, everybody. We'll be back on Broadway you. by Cams and the best alphabet ever. And Troy, and hi, Cutie Joe. Bye, Vapors. <laughs> and now I'm going to bring on bring back George, George Salazar, the the uh, the ring the ringleader. That's right, the ringleader. Kaiser Jose and Jason Tams, and look who's here, the leading lady herself, Stephanie. Hi. <laughs> everyone. I told you we we're gonna go late. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm so happy I got to make it. So for <laughs> our where is everybody? In the bathroom. <laughs> Back in the bathroom. So Stephanie, for our serious XM listeners who don't necessarily know the show, can you please tell us who you played? Yes. Um, so I am Stephanie Shu and I played Christine Canigula who was the um, love interest and she's a total weirdo. She loves um, theater and play rehearsal. And she's our, she's our little weirdo ingenue of be more cold. <laughs> Just gonna miss, I'll be more chill. <laughs> hey, George, tell Troy to come back, by the way, because we have to have our final segment with Troy. So just text okay. him. We're have his number right here. Troy's not even, he's just wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go back to you, Stephanie, Jason, I just want to ask you, it's so interesting because you, you played such a vulnerable, sweet character in a chorus line. Was it fun to play like the most confident person in the world? Yes, it was so oh. fun. Uh, and I was secretly, it's very not who I am. And I was secretly hoping that, you know, stepping into those shoes would kind of rub off a little bit on me, but maybe not the world domination part, just the, the confidence part. Uh, yeah, it was so fun. I, I loved it. And oh, good. Troy's back. So bring on Troy. Hi, Troy. Hi, Troy. Sorry, I forgot to talk about it. So George has such a cool thing that he told me that at one point, mm. I guess all of you, so Jason, Stephanie, and Troy, you were all on at one point playing leading roles. Jason, what's your what's your ethnicity? You're Asian too, right? Yes, uh, I'm Chinese, Hawaiian, and white, and uh, you know, I'm a mix of a bunch of different stuff, as most people who grew up in Hawaii are. Right. Oh yeah, our friend Kayala. So it's George is saying it's true. It's a very big deal that there were three Asian leads on Broadway. Four. Four. I'm half Filipino. Oh, you were on too. I thought, yeah. I thought Troy was on for you. Tro Troy was on for Jared. I was for on Will. for Will. Oh okay. my God. Four I Asian was, leads. I was the missing component. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did you guys realize as you were doing it what a big deal it was? Yes. Yeah. It was uh it was a really like special night. It was super cool. Like Troy and I were uh were we start our show stage left. Huh. Stephanie started her show stage right. Jason started his show 25 minutes into act one. So he was in his dressing room and we, it was just, it was a really exciting moment um, in, in that curtain call moment at the end of the show where like we all came out and it was just like one Asian American after the next. And it was just a really cool moment. And I wanted to like end our time here to like, you know, shine some light on that too, because it was a great moment where we were all playing characters that weren't written as Asian people, you know, like we were just, we were just, um, it just happened that way. And it was uh, from really New Jersey. cool. From New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so cool. And I'm so looking forward to when it's not such a big deal anymore. Mm -hmm. And and um, uh, it just, yeah, uh, uh, it was it was amazing. I loved every second of it. And that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, it was so cool. I'm so curious. You know, my I said this before, but I'm, I my ex-boyfriend was Chinese-American. And his parents were so not into him doing anything artistic. Like, was it hard for you guys to break into show business because your parents didn't want it? Or did your parents support it? 
my dad is the Asian one, and he's the one that introduced me to theater. Oh, that's so nice. You know what? You guys are a lot younger, and I think that maybe, you know, I think it was a different time. What about you, Stephanie? Well, yeah, I think um, it's funny because what my mom said to me when she saw Be More Chill at the signature, she said, you know, you're really lucky that a director took a risk on you and let you play a white person's part. And that might sound like a crazy thing, but actually I think I understood what she was saying, which was that, you know, growing up, there weren't shows like Be More Chill where all of a sudden one day there were four Asian leads. There was, unless you were in Miss Saigon, it was yeah. like, or Lucy Liu, it was like, you're not gonna have a career in the arts. So I don't think it's a matter of, you know, my mom being a tiger mom or anything like that. I think it's just a matter of her she came to America and had no idea where her baby girl was going to find a place in the arts um, in this country. It just didn't seem possible to her. Um, so now she's definitely come around to it. But I think, you know, like any logical parent, it's just scary. It's a very crazy industry already. Um, and you tack on any other uh, things that might hold you back or seemingly hold you back. It, you just want your kids to be you know, have food on the table. Mm -hmm. So, I, That made me think of another thing that I wanted to say about all having four um, Asian principals go on was that um, there are other shows, like you mentioned, Miss Saigon and King and I, and there, those sh shows aren't not problematic, but I love them. I love those shows and I root for those shows, but it was so cool to have four principal Asian characters that were, um, United citizens of the United States mm -hmm. and that were existing in the present moment. I feel like that is something that was revolutionary. And I'm so thankful uh, for everybody involved, for Joe and Joe Iconis and Joe Trace and Jen Tepper and everybody on, on, the, on the upper levels that helped allow that to happen. I think that's so rad. Look at some of these comments. There's so many. I'm an Asian, a Filipino, and this means so much to me. Um, hold on. There's other, the, hold on. There was, there's so many. Very sweet about being bullied. Right. Hold on. My God, they're going so fast here. Here we go. This makes me so happy because I got bullied for being half Asian Thai and made fun of, it's, everyone's commenting about looking up to you and being represented. It's so, it's so beautiful. Yeah, do you it think really, re representation like truly matters because, you know, Stephanie and Jason and Troy and I have, we've, I mean, over the, over the journey of Be More Chill, we've, we've, We've shared, like we've talked about how growing up there wasn't anyone who looked like us on TV. And like that puts a certain idea in your head that like you can't do this. Right. And so that we got to be a part of a show where we got to A, play characters that white kids were seeing themselves in, but B, we were, we were, we were, we were giving hope and uh, inspiration to young people who turn their TVs on and, and don't see themselves. We got to do that eight times a week and it's it's really powerful. And I think it's it's the most, um, it's my favorite part of, of the entire Be More Chill journey, right? Because in the book written by Ned Vizzini, Michael is a white ginger and mm -hmm. Christine is a white girl. And you know what I mean? And, and the squip looks like Keanu Reeves who is also Hawaiian, but you know, like, yeah. you know, we, we are, our creative team, um, you know, they were not interested in t in in telling a really, you know, I don't want to say bland, but like they they were really interested in um, in in telling the story with as as like rich a fabric of 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 what our country is, right? Um, uh, as possible, and um, and so yeah, I mean, it's that that will forever be the highlight of this entire uh, process and journey for me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Stephanie, do you, do you think like you are a trailblazer? I mean, do you think of that about yourself? Do you realize that now looking back, like what a big deal it is? I don't know that I'm a trailblazer, you but are. I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, when I think back on that time, I think a lot of us, and I think many people of color who are given any opportunity, it, um, the responsibility is quite large because you recognize like if I had Christine Canigula when I was younger, I think my whole life would have been different. My perceptions of beauty or romance or theater, 
and what was available to me would have been completely different. And I definitely was aware of that weight, especially when we got to Broadway and we already had a, a fan base. It was like, okay, we have to show up times a hundred because we are just making more space for more for more young people so that they don't have to ask any of the questions that we had to ask when we were younger. Um, so I think we're all trailblazers, you know, and um, it's the gift of any sort of adversity is that, you know, you turn it into making more space for, for, for other people. I have to show a few more comments because they're just, it's great. It was so cool seeing a Filipino on stage. My brain just lit up going like, wow, that's a Filipino on stage. Wow. That's a lot of Asians. That's so cool. Um, as an Indonesian, seeing Asians on Broadway is such an inspiration to me. You guys are what Broadway should be and always should have been. Yeah. Well, a hundred percent to that. I mean, it's just crazy. Well, this it's struggle, man. Well, I mean, I don't know if everyone saw your show because uh, I, I wasn't part of the show with flower drum song, but what by Lee said, because it was, say that right now because well, it was, I just felt, I, I, well what she said she was just saying how lucky she was that she got to be cast in all these musicals and I was like it actually is not luck it's devastating that you had to feel you were lucky she's a brilliant dancer and she was like I was so lucky that I got to be like the Asian cast in the course I'm like no it's not luck it's it's just so unfair like you should have been in there and it's horrible that like, you got the one i mean it's just so sad that that's all they could ever do they'd be like a asian person a black person and then it was the entire you know we're really seeing it because we're doing all these broadway show reunions and we're like looking at these casts we're like oh my god every single lead is white of all these shows in the last 20 years and it's just like come on what the hell so you guys your and show it's nothing against the people that were in them and and you know for, for a while it was like do we have them? Do we not have them? And it's like, cause we felt we, so uncomfortable. We felt so uncomfortable, but then it's like, but it is Broadway, but that's the past. It doesn't mean that that is what the future will be when Broadway comes back. Yeah. But you oh, know, yeah. and it's nothing against the people that are in them because there's so many talented people that are in them. It just means this, what we're, what we're finding in the reunions are like, this is Broadway. This is what that Broadway show was 10 years ago, five years ago, 40 years ago. And now, you know, shit is changing and, and it's, it's changing. We're not yeah. saying that crap yeah. anymore. And I have to I have to say that I know that um, Britain and Tiffany were here representing BAC today. But, you know, it's been very interesting in this time where the lights are dark on Broadway and we're hearing a lot of producers and theater makers say that they are going to advocate for change. Um, and I just want to like further put out into the air that I hope that people hold themselves accountable. Um, because even sometimes I get the emails for what's going to be on Broadway next. And I'm like, so <laughs> do you really want it to change? Or did you just say that? Um, but I do believe it. And so, you know, just putting that out into the air because it takes all of us. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, I, I, I've just been saying like change doesn't happen in silence, right? And so like, I I do, I echo that and I really hope that, um, you know, actions speak louder than words, but you know, I think we we got to be a part of this thing, right? And we got to, I mean, the, it's all there in the comments and the impact and effect that that has on the lives of the next generation of artists is something yeah. that I think needs to be cherished and really, um, cultivated you know because there's something there and um and and yeah it's time right like we we're all paused we're all at home right. we all want to get back in theaters and create with our friends and we can't do that and so we're stuck here really just thinking about our own mortality and then also like what's wrong and um and hopefully uh you know the people who sit in boardrooms out of the spotlight are are you know are are, are actually taking the steps to make sure that when we do get back from this, that it is a fully different experience and that everyone, um, regardless of gender, race, color of skin, uh, that everyone feels safe and welcome in this environment because I mean, theater is beautiful, right? And it's why you guys have had almost 200 shows and it's why so many people tune into Stars in the House. We love it, right? And so it's something that we should be really taking care of. And um, 
and 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 caring for and and again like really ushering this industry into this next phase of 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 our art evolving okay yeah. so there's three things well four things so first of all young people watching please don't forget what we did at the beginning of the show that's right because in order to make change everyone has to have the right to vote and be allowed to vote and we have to have poll workers young people so, that's yeah, you and it's a people, money poll, job right pollhero.org i urge everyone to go there and check it out and spread the word okay three more things yep. jason i just texted you some donations to read would oh, you good. check your phone dear yes i will i would love to okay <clears throat> okay maureen from pennsylvania thank you very much uh uh this Eleven dollars and eleven cents is for Will Roland and Will Roland only. Wait a minute! Did I just send you the same one. Wait, these are the ones I read. Wait, I just sent you the same one. Oh. Personally. Hold on. That, say, that sounds very wait. familiar. I remember yeah, that. Was, it was. You hilarious. said that it wasn't, and she so she donated another eleven dollars <laughs> to really <laughs> yeah. make her point. Hold exactly. on, Jace. Check your check. What I just sent you. Eleven dollars and twelve cents. Okay, okay, it just came through. Okay, Karen go. from Boston, $25. I saw Be More Chill with my little sister, and it was one of the best days of my life. This show means a ton to both of us. Thank you so much. Bree from Connecticut, thank you very much for your donation. Nicole from New York City, $10. Missing this show and this cast a ton. You guys made my 2019 so special, and this community helped lead me down my own artistic path. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. Ellen from Australia says, can I please get a shout out to our incredible cast of Be More Chill at Phoenix Ensemble in Brisbane, Australia? Yes, you can. Yeah, Brisbane. Hey, Bye. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Uh, we're having so much fun with the show. Everything about it is so wonderful. Glad to hear that. <laughs> I can't wait to see the bootlegs. Um, Haley from Indiana. She says, uh, hi, everyone. Be More Chill means so much to me, and I'm so glad I got to watch this reunion. Ah, uh, by the way, Sarah Rodriguez, who's a fan, she made the pitiful children pop figure with the decorated box, Jason. And she says, hey. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I still have it. Thank you so much. That is iconic. It was this incredibly detailed pop figure. It's it's amazing. The kind of art that our show inspired other people to make is is so inspiring. And it created this like uh, perpetual cycle of creative inspiration <laughs> i don't know uh -huh. really cool. Thanks, so two things before we go george i you need to just relay for the listening audience um one of my favorite stories <laughs> about your god spell um oh god you won't let this one go so no dear no i won't uh okay so basically this was my broadway debut i did god spell and um i'm very sweaty i'm a very sweaty performer and um i i i got sweat into my mic and the um md charlie alterman handed wallace smith who was playing judas a handheld mic and he came up to me and he went you sweat it out your mic, use this. And so I <laughs> grabbed it and was it threw me off completely. Cause I was like, you know, very physical and clowny and extra in that show. And uh, and so now having to hold this and, and do all the clowny stuff with one arm completely threw me off. I completely forgot my words. I didn't, rem I didn't know where I was. It was a complete train wreck. And by that point we were like very close to closing the show. So everyone was kind of like, checked out and I remember like looking over to Telly and being like, and Telly looked at me and went, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm standing there and I, 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 I'm completely lost. I don't know where we are, what we're doing. And um, I, for some reason, bend over and put the mic up to my mouth and I just start going <sighs> and I start grabbing my chest. And so at this point, my nerves have forced me to fake a heart attack on stage on Broadway <laughs> and I'm bent over and I look up and there's a stage management booth at Circle in the Square um, directly in front of me. And Beverly Jenkins, who I absolutely love and adore I was sitting there and um oh this is great because we talked about this on your serious show and so people are going to actually get to see the impression she <laughs> she was seated at the booth and she went and then she realized that i was just trying to buy time and she went like this 
<laughs> and sat back and watched me. And eventually I remembered my words and we were able to finish, but I ran backstage to her at intermission was like, I'm not, I can't go on. I can't go on. I'm devastated. This is horrifying. Like I can't do it. And she was like, get over yourself. And then I went out and did the rest of the show. And that was when I faked a, a heart attack on Broadway. <laughs> that is so hilarious. How you go? <laughs> hey, that's amazing. We're going to close with this. This is when you were at Sirius XM and I videotaped you. And it was so amazing being so close to you singing. Like you were giving this like, Broadway performance, and I was like, I'm literally next to this person. I was literally freaked out with emotion at the end of it because your performance was so brilliant, and I was next to you. I can't describe what it was like being next to that amazing energy. So this is you performing and me filming, and just know that I'm literally like behind the camera crying. Here we go. It's so good. Knock, 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 knock. They're gonna start to shout soon. Knock, 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 knock. Oh, hell yeah, I'll be out soon. Knock, 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 knock. It sucks he left me here alone. Knock. And also to point out that I fully blew out my hair to be on a radio <laughs> show with Seth Rudetsky. I don't know, like what? Why I just, did I do my hair? It looks great. Your hair looks amazing. I just got a shot of Joel crying. Hi, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, girl. I know. <laughs> and How Lawrence here. Okay, we gotta say you guys are also amazing, so talented. Thank you all for being here. Jason, we'll have a chorus time reunion with you next, and we'll talk about all Can't your sets. Yeah, 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 Seth yeah. and James, Seth and James, thank you so much for having us. We oh, loved it. Yes. Thank you all for doing the late night show. This yeah. was so great. Thank, thank you. you so much. I'll play thank you. you. I don't know. I miss having somewhere to be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll play in honor of George. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. Oh, Remember when Will sang the Rainbow Connection? <laughs> that was so charming. This is funny. <laughs> Turn back, oh George.